Greetings and welcome to Man Fixes Car in Tiny Ass Garage. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm fixing this 1995 V8 5 Series manual and this is the first drive part two or is it the second drive part one? Anyway, the last time this guy blew up on me and I've since replaced him with a metal model. So now that that's done, let's see if we can still make it to our paint shop halfway across town. Let's go, get in. And away we go. Try not to hit the children's bicycles. All right, viewers, we are taking a slightly different route today, trying to race the misfortune we had on the first drive. Let's get the old distracting driving ticket method out. All right, so I obviously I fixed that pulley uh, and I took it for a spin last night, and there was a couple of things happening. One, it sounded like it had a supercharger, like a high-pitched whining noise, but only when you were giving it, like, a good amount of throttle under quite a bit of load. And the other thing that was happening was there was a bit of a noise when I was uh, kind of going left and right really fast with the steering wheel. Uh, and that could be just a low power steering fluid level, because I did check, and it was just a hair below the minimum. So I topped that up. Now the whining noise could be a number of things. Uh, what I forgot to do before was put the ground strap back on the hood. So it could be a grounding issue. It could be a bearing issue, or it could be the uh, alternator itself or the AC compressor. So I'm not gonna try and do everything at once because I wanna root out the cause of this. I've been searching on forums. This happens all the time, obviously, uh, with these engines and with any BMW because there's just so many pulleys and so many things and pretty much any motor. Now, what I can tell you is obviously if you guys have seen the previous episodes, I've changed those pulleys. The power steering pump itself and those pulleys are new, so they should not be causing any kind of whining noise. Now, it could be the bearing in the alternator, uh, which is maybe replaceable the bearing itself could be the alternator itself uh, or it could be the ac um the ac pulley which i haven't changed or the ac compressor itself so i'm going to see if the ground and the topping up of the fluid has made that noise go away the next thing i'm going to do is disconnect the ac belt because the ac doesn't work anyway see if that isolates the issue uh, and then if that doesn't work, I'm going to take off the main accessory belt, run the motor for two, three minutes, four minutes max before it overheats without the accessory belt, without the water pump, see if the noise goes away. The horn works. That's good. You got to have a strong horn on a car, you know, something that sounds deep and meaty. None of these like me, me, little mouse squeals. I had a Ducati for the better part of a decade and that thing had the most ridiculous sounding horn in the world it was like meh, meh. it was like mickey mouse tapping you on the shoulder going excuse me the motor however sounded like an absolute thunderstorm that thing was phenomenal loved that bike anyway i sold that bike to finance this believe it or not shout outs to any ducati owners out there leave me a comment below if you got one of those bad boys in my books the greatest motorcycles ever made hands down That sounds a lot less whiny now, actually. Good, good. Not sure how well you could hear that. That was, what, four and a half, five thousand 5,000 RPM? Full strong, this thing. Very strong. Obviously, it's not the fastest engine in the world. However, it has lots of torque. It sounds wonderful, although a little bit quiet in stock form. Uh, there's the Toronto beaches right there. It's a shame you can't swim in it because the water is filthy and disgusting and dirty and chemically infested but it looks like you know you're in Saint Tropez I swear if you squint really hard you'd say wow you're driving an E34 on the French Riviera what a day to be alive wind rushing through your non-existent hair life is good my friends by the way viewers if you want to know if your city was designed by a five-year-old have a look at that that is going into downtown Toronto and that is basically a bridge to nowhere what is that movie? That's going to bug me. Hit me up in the comments below. They fall off Ronin. That's right. How could I forget? They drive off the end of an unfinished highway. The car falls over. Falls on the other side. The bad guy gets away. The car blows up. Phenomenal movie. 
if you haven't watched that classic 1990s action movie. Also, featuring probably in my books, the greatest car chase of all time, featuring none other than the very own E34 M5. That's right. So, get those thumbs going, hit me up, let me know if you like Ronin, let me know if you know what I'm talking about. Best car chase scene movie ever. The famous joke in Canada, two seasons, winter, and construction. Case in point. So far, the car is holding up well, nothing has disintegrated yet. Engine temperature is lovely, motor sounds good, all is well. Minus the fact that I don't have AC. And this is the part, viewers, where I'd love to give it some beans and show you red line. But of course, it's traffic. So we will have to find a gap. The passing lane. Give her some speed. I'm noticing some vibrations. So I'm just going to pull over and check that everything looks okay on the tires and the suspension. Maybe we lost like a wheel balance or weight or something. Anything is possible. So safety first. Let's check it out. Make sure everything is looking good. <laughs> well, I took the starter relay and tapped it on the ground a bunch of times. And uh, then it just fired right up. Slight detour, no big deal. Wasn't nervous, it's just part of the experience. Okay, so the first part getting ordered when I get home is that starter relay, that's annoying. Only seems to happen when the engine's really hot though. Uh, but it is annoying and it's gonna leave me stranded at some point, so that's the first thing that's gonna go. Check the wheels, everything looked fine. I mean, listen, the wheels, uh, the tires are like 20 years old. Hasn't had a wheel alignment in your guess is as good as mine, so we're gonna try and take it easy and not go any, not go for any top speed runs today, shall we? Oh, the pull's healthy. That was 5,000 RPM in third. Sorry again for all the wind noise. Pushing 130 there, smooth as silk. Must be a tire imbalance issue because it only happens at about 110 so we'll get that sorted when we get some new wheels on this bad boy sorry to disappoint guys we're not even there yet and we're only at one breakdown let's see what happens what's wrong with this picture a truck going in the left lane 90 kilometers an hour again only in canada where the official passing lane is whatever flipping lane is empty see if the cruise control works we have working cruise control look at that the height of luxury oh yes that sounds sweet arriving at our destination in style success well done bmw only one breakdown well technically not a breakdown i stopped it wouldn't start but you know technicalities. All right, so we just finished with Cliff the man. Let me show you what I'm going to do to prep this thing. A very reasonable quote, and the reason being is I'm going to be taking off all the trim, all the lights, uh, this kind of windshield surround, this, all the chrome trim, uh, the trim around the handlebar, the handles, Basically everything that is not ready to be painted. I'm gonna take off the back bumper trim, the rear lights, um, the badges, this faded trim over here. Basically get it to him in as prepped condition as possible. Badge obviously as well. Uh, and he is going to paint the entire car, take the bumpers off. He's gonna paint this over here and cut a line over there so that it's nice and clean. He's gonna paint the insides of the bottom of the door jams, this, the skirts that I'll bring to him as well. Seems like a super reasonable guy. He also offered me to come and take videos and help out and kind of learn some stuff while I'm there, which is super cool, I love that. And um, now let's get back home and see if we make it in one piece. Oh yes, starts up. Come on, Mr. Truck, let me through. 
blazing saddles. It is hot out here. Who says that? Where do I come up with this stuff? Check engine light has come on now that I'm stuck in traffic. This is no good, no good. Keeping a very close eye on the temp gauge, obviously. Everything is going well so far. Check engine light has stained off. Temperature's good. There's the downtown skyline with the CN Tower. Just gotta get you home. By the way, if any of you are wondering where Drake lives, we put him at the top of the CN Tower. That way he's less likely to interfere in basketball games. And here we are, successfully back in the dead end. Careful not to hit the kids' bikes. We're home, baby. We're home. Now, the question you probably all have is, how much is it going to cost to repaint this entire thing? So, I want to hear from you in the comment section. Give me your guesses. I don't care where you are in the world. Drop me a note where you're from, how much you think this thing is going to cost in shekels, dinars, drachmas, US dollars. I don't care what denomination you use. I want to hear from you how much you think this is going to cost. Because the quote I got from our friend is, drumroll, three and a half thousand dollars Canadian, which is twenty-seven hundred dollars US, two and a half thousand dollars US, give or take, twenty-seven hundred euros, give or take that much. Now, that might be a lot, that might be really cheap. So let me know what you think. If that's cheaper than what you think it would be in your neck of the woods, have any of you painted your E34s and how much did that cost? So I'm gonna go with him and he gave me kind of mid-September as a time frame for when he's gonna be able to paint it, which is great because the next thing we gotta do is sort out some electrical gremlins on the starter, the rear windows don't work, and I wanna check out what's going on with that check engine light, even though the engine ran fine, so I'm guessing it's probably just a sensor. So again, I'd love to hear from you guys. What's been your experiences with painting 90s BMWs, E34s, E36s? I wanna hear it because I've never repainted a car fully before, and any advice you can give me would be appreciated. I wanna thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.